everyone, and welcome to Unit 7, Module 35. This is Solving Problems and Making Decisions. Here are your learning objectives, and here is your vocab. So, problem solving. There are two different strategies that we take to problem solve. The first is called an algorithm, and that's a methodical, logical, method that guarantees a solution to the problem, but it can take some time. So for example, if you're looking for a can of beans in the grocery store, the um, method, the algorithm method would have you go down each aisle, starting with the first aisle, going down each aisle until you find the beans. Will you definitely find the beans that way? Yes, you're going through every aisle. However, it's probably not the fastest way. So sometimes we, or most of the time, we like to take mental shortcuts. So a heuristic is a mental shortcut. It's a thinking strategy that allows us to make a quick judgment to solve the problem more efficiently. So you're like, okay, I need a can of beans. Maybe you've never been in the grocery store, but usually like the sides are not where the canned goods are. It's somewhere in the middle. And then you're like, oh, we see an aisle that says rice. And so maybe you think it's down there. So you make those kind of like mental shortcuts as you go. And you can make mistakes, but oftentimes it does save you time. Insight is another way to strategize. And that is when you're just sitting there and you have like this sudden aha moment and the solution just comes to you. So it contrasts with those previous strategies that we we're talking about where you're really thinking um, about it and like strategizing your approach. This way you're not strategizing your approach, you're just kind of sitting there and you're all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've got it. Um, Wolfgang Kohler did an experiment, he did several experiments actually using chimpanzees on Insight. One of them, he had a chimpanzee named Sultan in a cage with a short stick. Outside of the, out of the cage, he had a long stick and then fruit further away. So at first, Sultan tried to use the short stick to reach the fruit. He couldn't. He was frustrated. And then he just kind of sat there. And then all of a sudden, he was like, oh, got it. And he got the long stick, used that to use the short stick to get the long stick use the long stick to get the fruit, and done. So that was insight. So two different kinds of heuristics that you need to know. The first is representative heuristic. And when you see the word representative heuristic, you want to think prototype. What is the prototype of whatever this thing we're talking about? Sometimes that's helpful, right? but also sometimes that's wrong and it can lead us astray and ignore other relevant information and make assumptions that are um, untrue. So for example, on the right, you um, the question is who went to Harvard? Now I know this is a psych video, so you're probably already guessing that it is the woman on the left, Sonia Dara. She's a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model and she um, is an economics major at Harvard. The man on the right is the CEO um, of Chick-fil-A, and he went to University of Southern Georgia or something, something like that. Um, he did not go to Harvard. So availability heuristics. This is estimating the likelihood that an event's um, gonna happen based on what's available in your recent memory. Like, what have I been made aware of recently? And, oh yeah, that's what's going to happen. So, for example, these people sitting on the beach, and they're like, oh my gosh, I would not go in the water because, you know, shark attacks. Well, shark attacks make headlines, and so it's an available thing. It, it pops in their head. But what doesn't make headlines is people dying um, due to poor health, which is um, the numbers are, you know, tremendous and they're eating some unhealthy food. Also, the numbers of people dying due to alcohol and smoking. And so they're doing all of those things, sitting there with a newspaper 
with a shark on it because it's talking about shark attacks. And they're like, oh my gosh, I never go in there. So it's not actually logical. Like it doesn't make sense when you look at the statistics at all. Like any, they're never, nowhere near each other. But because it's information available in our minds, it's what we fear. Another example is um, having periods of very warm weather or very cold weather and then making your opinion about climate change based on the current weather, the recent weather. Hearing an airplane crashed and then not wanting to take the airplane, even though an airplane crash makes the news because it rarely ever happens and cars crash all the time. Confirmation bias, this is a review term. This is the tendency to search for info that supports our preconceived notions and ignore the stuff that doesn't support. So once we once we have a belief, it's hard to change our opinion. So some of the ones that um, are used as examples in the text, that vaccines cause autism spectrum disorder. So there's plenty of evidence that shows that this is not true. But yet, once people believe this, it's hard to get it out of their head. Um, President Obama being a Kenyan-born Muslim, right? Like, there was ample evidence to prove that that was completely false, but people didn't want to believe that, and they didn't look at that evidence. Um, the Patriots didn't record the sidelines. I'll leave that one to you to think about. Um, the U.S. war against Iraq, which was launched um, based on the belief uh, that there were weapons of mass destruction, and it turned out there were not weapons of mass destruction, when the Select Committee on Intelligence looked back at the information that the decision was based on, there was ample evidence to show that there were not weapons of mass destruction. However, that information was dismissed while the information that... Um, show there were weapons of mass destruction, because that was the motivation, um, were looked at more closely, given higher um, regard. So mental set is our tendency to approach a problem with the way we have previously approached it. Even though like that's not working anymore, like we just keep trying it the same way because that's what worked. If our Wi-Fi goes down in our house, we like unplug the Wi-Fi, plug it back in, and we're like, Okay, well, that didn't work. Now I don't know what else to do. Well, let me unplug it again. <laughs> like, we get stuck kind of in a mindset. So, um, intuition is our fast, automatic, and unreasoned feelings and thoughts. So, intuition is not like just gut instinct. It's actually more like our implicit knowledge, so our unconscious knowledge that we have um, absorbed, but we haven't, we're not consciously aware of. So we can't explain why we think what we think or feel what we feel, but we feel it. And the reason why we can't explain is because it's through our unconscious. So overconfidence is another review word, and that is the tendency to be more confident than correct. Um, for example, thinking that you can do all your work um, the night before and still get it all done. And then it doesn't happen. Tend to be more confident than correct. Belief perseverance. And this is clinging to one's initial views even after those views have been discredited. So, for example, reading an article about a political scandal and responding, oh my gosh, that guy's a scumbag. And then that article gets retracted and the person reads all the corrections and they're still saying, oh my gosh, that guy's a scumbag. So kind of that idea that first impressions do matter, like what people get in their head, it's hard to get out of their head. Um, there was a study with two groups um, who had opposing views on the death penalty and they were each given a supporting death penalty and an anti um death penalty um, article that said, this is new research, read it, tell us what you think. And it ended up that they dismissed the one that they didn't like, and they were so impressed with the one that they that did support their views that they actually grew stronger in their beliefs. So being presented with opposing information just kind of pushes people the way that they're already leaning. 
Um, one way to prevent belief perseverance, and I think this is really important um, in today's world, is to really just be open to thinking about and playing. Like, don't immediately shut down the other side. So if you um, believe that the death penalty should be ended, then you should play with in your mind, like, what are the benefits of the death penalty? Why do why could why is the death penalty good? Like think about like the opposite side of it so that you can help it can help you understand um, more of a middle ground perhaps. So framing this came up a little bit before. This is the way something is presented significantly affects what we do, what we decide to do, or what we think about something. So, for example, these frozen yogurts, if you're um, in the aisle and one says contains 20% fat, one says 80% fat free, that's essentially it's saying the same thing, except the one that says 80% fat free is going to be gone much sooner than the one that's just labeled 20% fat. So it's framing. It's the way that things are presented alters your decision. You're going to choose that one on the right because of the way it's presented. Um, when there's a sit, when there's, um, they're trying to sell you something, right? They always make it look like, oh, this was the original price and look at what you're getting it for. Um, just the way it's written, the font. Um, they're even talking about like the numbers, like, Fewer syllables are more desirable, like makes people more, it's more appealing to people. Um, climate change um, and many other um, world issues have been discussed um, at the American Psychological Association and conf like psychological associations throughout the world because they look at things like the word global warming or the words global warming and say, you know, people have, they, they fixate on that word, or they fixate on the word warming, and they, it confuses the goal, or it makes people um, angry about it, or whatever. And so they look at changing certain words, like, so now it's not global warming anymore, it's climate change, and, you know, they're always still talking about this. And other ways to, like, get people to be motivated to care. So, for example, in this cartoon... Climate change threatens our existence. No one care. No one's caring. Climate change threatens our economy, and people are freaking out. So, how do smart thinkers use intuition? Well, there's that dual track mind that we've been talking about. So, our conscious attention is in in one place, but our unconscious is actually collecting information and making good use of that, even though we're not attending to it. So, that's really like what our intuition is. Um, there was a Dutch research experiment where they gave uh, complex information to um, all three groups and they had to choose one of four options. The first group had to choose immediately. The second group was given several minutes to think about the problem and then they solved it and they did slightly better than group one. But group three repeatedly has done better and that group was actually not thinking about the problem the whole time they were distracted from the topic and then they went back to it and they perform best so actually like stepping away from it you're not really completely stepping away from it your unconscious mind is actually still processing that information um, and kind of putting it together so that when you go back to it, you're going to have kind of a fresh look at it. Um, intuition is usually adaptive. So you see a stranger, they look like someone who's harmed you in the past, and you feel fearful of them. So that's for survival. Intuition, again, it's implicit knowledge. We already know it, but we can't really explain why we know it because it's we've collected it through our unconscious. So takeaways, algorithms guarantee a solution, but they take longer than heuristics. It's helpful to take time away from complex problems, so distract yourself and then return to the problem. Insight is that aha moment. Framing alters people's responses, and once people form a belief, it's hard to change their mind. That's belief perseverance. Representative heuristics, you want to think prototype. And availability heuristics, you want to think readily available info or most recent. And that sums up module 35, and I will see you in.